Hey tennis folks, Matt here from Matt's Point Tennis. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a performance tennis coach. I hold a master of science degree in strength and conditioning, and I've been working with tennis players for close to 15 years now. So today I wanted to go through Jasmine Paolini's off-court training. I've been sent a reel of her doing a variety of different things in the gym, uh, sprinting and so on. And um, I wanted to go through and offer you know, my take on, you know, whether what she's doing is good, if there's any suggestions that can be made, um, and just have a closer look at how a, a pro tennis player trains off the court. So here we have some resisted uh, sprints. So off the bat, it looks like she's, she's doing some here off lateral starts. Approximately 70% of all movements in tennis occur in the lateral direction. So it's, it is important to train that off the court in an explosive, high intent manner. I would have preferred to see her here do these over, you know, five meters, maybe 10 meters, uh, just to ensure that we're getting several strides in this acceleration phase. Doing it off of one push and then stopping, uh, I just find that uh, she's already decelerating and only really gets a push off of one leg. Um, but there can be benefit to this type of work, definitely. Then we see her doing some resisted sprints in a linear manner. And uh, in general, I think tennis players aren't sprinting enough. So if you add one to two sprint sessions per week, um, all year round, and then just dose it, you know, differently, depending on whether or not you're in a tournament week or uh, if you're in a training block, but Performing those sprints has a lot of benefits. Just in terms of specificity, tennis courts these days are bigger um, than they've ever been. So the, the dimensions of the court have increased. It's not uncommon for players to track down a drop shot, for example, going from the back of the court. That's 10 to 15 meters in, in length. Um, on the big courts as well, if we look at pro tennis, um, some of those distances that they cover are even longer than that. And those points can be really important in, a, in the dynamics of a match. So from a specificity perspective, I still think there's value there, but we get a lot of other benefits when it comes to sprinting. So um, there's correlations between sprinting and reducing hamstring injuries. There's also benefits to starting speed when it comes to sprinting, even if we sprint over 10, 15, 20, even 30 meters, we still get the benefit of that early portion um, of the acceleration. So that starting strength, and that's key in tennis because we're constantly accelerating, propelling our body towards the ball. When it comes to the loaded sprints, we've done these in the past with certain players, Mark Pullman's being one of them. Uh, I think there is value in it for a number of reasons. So firstly, uh, a lot of players, because they're not used to sprinting regularly, they often rise up really quickly during the sprint. So um, during an acceleration, we want to maintain um, a lean early on and we gradually want to increase um, that lean and, and rise up as we're um, increasing the stride frequency. Now, in terms of the loads, it, you probably want to stick to loads that are on the lighter side. Research has shown that it can be beneficial with a variety of loads, but I think uh, unless you're really advanced and you've done a lot of sprint training in your in your program over the years, um, I think that your mechanics will just break down and it will no longer look like a sprint. You really have to have high, um, high force generating abilities to be able to propel yourself with loads that are that are heavier. So I would stick to loads that are a bit lighter. And lastly, it's if you do implement resisted sprint training, it's much better to do it the way that Paolini's doing it in terms of using um, a harness so that you can still get, you know, the proper arm action and it looks a lot more like actual sprinting versus if you used a sled and you pushed it, uh, which I don't believe is, is quite the same. If you followed me in the past, you know that I'm a big proponent of strength training for tennis using loads that are a little bit higher, probably closer to, you know, three to six RM for most, um, most athletes. Um, 
and there's just a lot of benefits to it. But when we're looking at Paolini's squat here, she's using a pretty good weight. It looks probably like it's over 100 kilos. Um, the, the range is, is limited, um, and probably the reason for this is that they want to tackle joint angles that they deem are more specific to what we'll see on a tennis court. Another reason is that heavier loads recruit high threshold motor units, um, and these are you know, linked to fast twitch muscle fibers, so we do get this massive neural benefit in terms of um, being able to recruit the fibers quickly, being able to um, send a, a faster signal to the muscle. And this can be beneficial when we want to perform explosive type of movements. Having said that, I don't think that I would program, you know, quarter squat with that much weight too often, probably periodically during the year, because of a couple reasons. One is that there's a high axial load. So we're getting a lot of force going through her spine here. Um, and I just don't believe that there is a lot of tension created on the muscle uh, in terms of the lower legs. I, I would still get her, even if I program this, I would probably get her to do it still a bit lower than this so that we get a little bit more tension and maybe we would reduce the load, but it would still be a pretty high neural um, stimulus. Personally, I would still bias deep squatting, so full depth squatting for the majority of the time for tennis players. There's more tension on the quads. We still get a massive neural benefit. And in terms of joint angles, uh, you know, tennis and sport in general is very unpredictable. We're gonna go through a variety of different joint angles. So why not train through that entire range of motion? We'll be able to gain strength in all of these different ranges and have it when we need it on the tennis court. But in general, it's great to see Paolini doing some heavy lifting, especially um, as a female, we don't see that quite as often. Um, so I do think that there's uh, tons of benefits to what she's doing here in the gym. Uh, here she's doing an Olympic um, lifting variation. So it's a, it's a clean pull, high pull. In general, I'm a proponent of Olympic lifts uh, for tennis players. As long as you can learn it to a decent level, then you can reap a lot of benefits. So one of those is high rates of force development. So when you move um, a moderately heavy load with high intent fairly quickly, you know, we're working on uh, the ability to generate force very quickly. You're also um, handling very high breaking forces. So when you catch the bar on your shoulders or when you catch it overhead during a snatch, you're also getting this breaking force demand um, on, on various joints and uh, muscles. So in terms of the lower body, you're breaking really hard at the knee. And that is very similar to, to how we need to break on a tennis court, especially during really tough um, wide shots. There's also um, a force summation aspect to Olympic lift. So the ability to um, generate force from the ground and then be able to summate and link that force from one segment to the next. And that's really important during serving and during ground stroke hitting. We need to generate forces from the ground um, to be able to express high racket speeds. In terms of Paolini, I hope that this is just a variation that they're doing and that they also perform uh, the catching portion of the lift. I still think that that's probably one of the most important features of the Olympic lifts for tennis players or any sports where uh, a change of direction element is um, required. Because again, we're just getting such a a large amount of breaking forces that we're training, um, followed by when we're standing up with that load, this propulsion. So think about every time that you're hitting a tennis shot, you go wide, you break really hard to get set up for your shot, you hit your shot, and once you've hit, you've got to recover really quickly with high intent to the next position, that propulsion aspect. But in general, Great to see her doing some Olympic lifting variations in the gym.
So here Paolini is doing some depth jumps, which can be a very beneficial plyometric activity. What we're doing is, you know, as we're in the air, we're, there's a pre-activation occurring um, in the muscle tendon unit. Once we hit the ground, we try to come off really quick and we have this stiffness component that allows us to do so. Um, so it's, it can be really beneficial and there's a high transfer to things like the split step, for example, in tennis. So being able to really spring off of the split step quickly. In general, she's doing it off of a low box here and then jumping up uh, onto a higher box. Probably best to do so if you're new to, to depth jumps. You can start off with, you know, a smaller box to, to come off of, but the height of the box is what dictates the load here. So a higher box equals a higher demand. Okay. So over time, as you're getting better, you probably would want to do this off of a box that's higher. Um, and the box that you're jumping on may not be as important here. She's, you know, she has to get into deep triple flexion at the hip knee. And an ankle to be able to land on the box. So there's probably a greater emphasis being placed on that versus that stiffness, that springiness uh, as she's coming off the ground. Um, so actually maybe reversing and jumping off of a higher box and landing on a lower box may be more appropriate when we're trying to improve this stiffness quality. It may also be beneficial to simply do what we call uh, locomotive plyometrics, so performing plyometrics in a moving dynamic fashion. So we're getting uh, more reps here in, instead of just, you know, one-off reps. Um, and we're able to uh, improve our timing with how we attack the ground. You're still getting that stiffness quality. You can modulate the intensity, so you can go light, medium, you can really send it, max effort. So there's different ways to do that. You can also do them in different patterns. You can do them in different directions. Um, and I do think there's a lot of benefit there because of the multi-directional nature of movement in tennis. That's all I have for today. Overall, from this small snapshot of uh, Jasmine Paolini's training, I think it's quite good. She has a mix of you know, lifting, sprinting, jumping, all training modalities that tennis players should prioritize off the court. So hopefully this video was beneficial for you. Subscribe and follow along for more vids in the future.